Hey everyone, we're back for our weekly recap. Uh, Don and I are doing the technique again. This week we're joined with Ron Bristow, one of my good friends, great practitioner from Ohana, uh, martial, Art, martial Arts Academy in Grace Lake. Phenomenal school under Chris Lund out there. You can talk about that a little bit. Great place to train, and I love training with these guys. Today, since we've got Ron, and we've spent a lot of this week talking about, at least in, in different places, about how there's this big argument about this kind of jiu-jitsu versus that jiu-jitsu. And really, it's, it's one big art with a lot of different facets, and each one of them are entirely valid. You just have to understand why you're doing it. Um, and that kind of plethora of techniques that runs across jiu-jitsu runs through each technique in each position as well. So as we run through our recap this week, we're going to talk about what we spent the bulk of the week on going from side mount to climb that positional ladder. Uh, today we're going to focus on moving a knee and belly. Once we do a knee and belly, I'm going to run through our review for the, some of the movements we did this week. Then we're going to have Ron jump in. Ron's going to show us what he does from there so we can compare and contrast. Uh, no right answer, no wrong answer, but what we want to do is kind of show the diversity of jiu-jitsu from Ron and I come from similar backgrounds, we same, trained with the uh, same coach for a long time, and you'll see how different physiologies, different mindsets, uh, different backgrounds of training and where we've gone since there have kind of affected how we look at movement and how we think about jiu-jitsu. So uh, hopefully it'll be an inter interesting exercise for our members and the people that aren't members that are out there watching to kind of see what we do and, and how we experiment with things, can kind of get an idea about how we are with this. So let's start, I'll kick off our recap. So we start with Don in side man. and. As with all things, nothing happens until I can competently hold side mount. I can't advance my position on the ladder, I can't attack from side, and I can't move on until I can hold side. So we need to talk about what we're doing to maintain side control. I'm always trying to get rid of this. But in the past, we've worked on the, the hip drop. This week, we've worked a lot on dropping the top knee back, circling up, and coming high underneath the arm. And now I'm advancing my position. I'm turning my knees away from his feet. And I'm getting tight into my side mount so it's harder for him to recompose. If he drives this underhook, this week we spent a lot of time bringing this over into the shallow side position and dropping my weight back to contain this. Because I can't accept this underhook because Don's just going to turn and come out and he's already very close to escaping. So I have to, once I've established good side mount, I've worried about this. Now once I'm in a good stable position and I understand when my arm has to be here versus when my arm can be over here, now I can start thinking about advancing. Our first advancement today is we're going to work on going from this good side control to knee and belly. The reason we drill knee and belly first before I transition to full mount is because it's just closer. I have to go a further distance cross body to get to full mount. I only have to go to center line to get my knee and belly. So, my transition from knee and belly, last time we did really a pressure transfer. This time we're going to pressurize a little bit differently. My hands are going to come back, I'm going to bring one hand to the collar. I can either go into the collar, or I can get material on the sleeve. Either way, good tight grip. From here, this hand comes out and I go to the outside of the pant, just at the hip. I can grab the belt, but the belt moves. The belt might be untied, the lapel moves, it goes everywhere. Uh, which you'll see when, when Ron jumps in here. For me, I grip this pant because the pants by and large are pretty stationary. Now, rather than pressuring chest down, what I'm gonna do this week is drive my arms straight. And I'm lifting my center off and I'm locking my skeletal structure and now I'm dropping my weight right across my skeletal structure. This starts to look very weak because I'm building structure over the top of him and I'm giving him space. However, if we don't muscle this, if we lock our skeletal structure out and apply pressure down the skeletal structure, now go ahead and start moving. Recompose guard. Shrimp the leg. As long as I properly set my weight on my straight locked out skeletal structure, this can be very controlling. From here, my feet pop up underneath me. I go to the ball of my foot. My knee comes center line. My other foot starts to post out to a proper knee and belly position. And then as always, I turn my knee up towards the sternum and I bring the laces of this foot to the outside of this quad. Now I've got good pressure knee on belly. For training purposes, play nice to your partner, put the ball of the foot on the ground. Anytime I do this for real, the ball's off and I'm really dropping pressure on that solar plexus. From here today, first thing I always do is try and dig my underhook because this is a common counter. Today he's gonna lock that out I don't have this access. Same side hand, we talked about this, is gonna go inside the collar. I'm gonna plant to where my fist is about at the mat. I'm not lined up on the side of his musculature on the neck, 
as much as my wrist is ready to lock in to that area of the carotid artery between the side musculature of the neck and the trachea. This hand is going to go thumb up, opposite, and again, take your time. Set this collar properly and get a good grip. Fist towards the mat. This is really all I need on this next movement for the baseball bat choke. Now my knee is going to turn up, drive across the center line. I'm keeping weight now on my elbow, on his chest, and you'll notice my shoulder dips towards his hips. That strains this arm, and my arm is going to lay across his carotid artery. I'm doing this motion with my wrist to take that space out and lay my scaphoid bone directly into his carotid artery. I step, turn my hips over, and look where my weight is. All the way over his hips. Now I'm just going to take my elbows to my side, expand my chest, and my choke is there. So we've gone transition from the side mount up to our knee on belly, and then we've hit our first attack through the baseball bat choke. Let's scoot on back. So, weekly recap for us. Now, I want to have Ron jump on in, and let's take a look at a variation of this that Ron likes a lot in the on belly. So take it away. Um, all right. So. Just a minor change in what Alex was showing here. A lot of what I do is uh, a little bit opportunistic at times. I do like to take the lapels out. So a lot of times when I do roll, you'll see me messing with them, pulling them out, just to have habit. So in case I need them later, um, they just happen to be there. So kind of what Alex is showing, same sort of thing. I'm going to transition up to the, the neon belly. And you know, if he's defending or doing, doing whatever it is he was doing, I like to pull the lapel up. So it's kind of your shoulder, and then I'll start to reach under his head with my uh, left hand, and then pull back to the opposite side and grab on the underside, I think come under and grab here. Now it's usually like a pretty tight grip when you first grab it, so the person's usually moving around or trying to get away, and a lot of times that'll give you the opportunity to try to pull with both hands and really try to get it tight. And it puts a lot of pressure on his chest. And it really, um, you can see it's kind of turning red and feeling terrible. But you get really get a tight grip. So then if he starts to turn into me again, because he doesn't like it, it's the same exact finish as the baseball bat choke Alex was just showing. But I'm going to grab my hand over here, grab over his head, and then you can finish sometimes from here, or you can step over and finish and get it. But the only difference is now, instead of using the two lapels here, now I'm taking this, the end of his lapel, passing it under the head, grabbing it the, the same side, um, my right arm, because I'm gonna, on his right side, then I'm going to grab across, it's the same exact finish as Alex is showing. Pretty slight, slight, slight change, really like it. Um, so you can see same effect on both versions of the knee into a choke. Um, I think the keynote for me when we talk about a compare and contrast on that, the similarities are look at the position, look at the fundamentals. The transition is exactly the same. You're locking out your skeletal structure, you've got your grips that are, that, that are in the right places to hold him down on both sides of the body, and you're making that nice smooth transition. It looks very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the ending with the choke that's a little different. Yeah. I mean, it's the same, and it's, it's a cool choke because it's the same exact principle. You're changing almost nothing other than what your, your handlebar is on what you're using for the choke. So it's, it's pretty easy to remember. It's not like you're adding a whole new technique into your arsenal. You're really using the same thing with just a slightly different tool. Right. Um, you said slightly opportunistic. On the downside, do you find that it's harder to set that up with the threading of the hand or threading of the collar? Or does it present itself just through the, the, the process of the roll? I think that... Um, it's something I do early on, and you know from, from rolling with me that I really, from the beginning, I'm always pulling out lapels and making sure everything's all messed up. So, you know, right when you start from, from whatever position, I'm trying to yank them out so that eventually it'll be there. So I'm not like, so if we do get to that position where I am just at his side trying to yank it out, and then it becomes almost a little more, more obvious. So through the roll, yeah, I'm trying to pull stuff out so it's not quite as uh, overt. I'm just yanking it and pulling it, yeah. And conversely, like you can make, I think, the same argument for the baseball bat choke, because as soon as people start gripping, even on that fundamental baseball bat choke I like so much, when people get a hand in and a hand in, I don't think there's any secret as to what you're trying to do there. I think, um, so really, it, it's, it's whichever version you choose, there's always something there that's going to send off the red flags. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so for me, I really like seeing that stuff. I don't play a ton of lapel things. It makes me want to play more of them. Uh, 
it's really neat to see the diversity of jiu-jitsu. There's a lot of stuff out there, and honestly, none of it's bad. Uh, there are things that work better or worse given your situation, right? But it's all one big part of the art, and that art, whether you're doing a gi wrap, whether you're doing a fundamental baseball bat choke, relies on the fundamentals. I don't think you saw Ron do anything crazy in a transition that you know, we haven't talked about as being fundamentally sound. So regardless of what little twist you're putting on jiu-jitsu or why you're doing it, the fact is, man, the, the art key, it all comes back to those fundamentals, regardless of where you want to take it. Thoughts? No, I, I totally agree. And, and that's why you can see, you know, even though, you know, we train at different gyms and we've had some different backgrounds, you know, you're teaching a triangle or something like the, the baseball bat choke, it's not like it's this huge different thing that's impossible. We just sort of speak a slightly different dialect of the same language, you know. So it's, uh, you know, but it's cool to see those variations because it gives you a, a lot of flavor and uh, a lot of, you know, different experience and seeing, you know, the triangle is a triangle at your gym until you go to another gym and then you're like, whoa, I, it's like I never trained it before. I feel goofy even coming over here doing technique with you guys because you guys don't do things a little bit differently and I've, you know, I've been training for a number of years so then I come over here, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore, which is cool because then, you know, it really uh, excites me to, to continue to try to learn and, you know, see things from through a different lens. And Don, Don's been with us, and I think you started Jiu Jitsu at, at the old Triangle when, when Mike showed up in town. And so you've been, aside from like having some people, and you've been here your whole time and on different schools. How does it feel when we do have other people, like Ron comes in, or some of the guys from Scotts come in, and like we get a different energy? Is that beneficial? Yeah, for sure, because I mean, I've been, you know, a totally different style, you know, from Mike, more of a, you know, get on top, stay on top, and just grind it out. And, and it's helped me a lot just to add more to my game and makes it more fun too. So, but yeah, having all those variations keeps you keeps you thinking. Right, and I, I like that about too. It keeps it fun. And for me, if jujitsu is not fun, why? Why are I mean, why are we doing it? Unless you're just unless you're in this because you want to be an MMA fighter. They're like, man, I, like I want to be able to defend myself. There are those people out there, but man, if you want to come back in here three, four days a week and, and train and, and grind this thing out from. The years it takes to go from white belt to black belt, like you gotta, you gotta have fun. If it's not fun, and that's the one thing I can really say, I've been very lucky at every gym I've been in. I've had a ton of fun, at, you know. When it, and, and that's why I'm still here. If I wasn't having fun, I, I wouldn't do this. So I think there probably is a, a certain factor there that's important. And I think we overlook that because as martial artists, I, we have a tendency to take ourselves a little too seriously sometimes. And I, I, I've probably been in that boat before. For the people that have known me for years, I've probably been in that boat before. But it's good to like understand that like we're having fun with this too. Like regardless of what your ulterior motives are, your ultimate goal is for you to get to. We're having fun with this too, or we wouldn't be doing it all the time. Yeah, it's a lifelong dedication when you're when you're doing jujitsu. I mean, if you're in jujitsu just to do it for like, I'm gonna do jujitsu for seven years. Like I've never really met anybody <laughs> who's like come out that way. I mean, people end up you know dropping out after a time, but nobody ever starts out saying I'm gonna train for three or four years and then I think I'm just gonna quit after that. But it's it, it relates back to like what you're saying. You, you're, if you're going to do it for a long time, it's got to be fun. There's got to be a reason to keep doing it, whether it's building a skill or meeting, you know, building friendships and meeting people and stuff like that. There's got to be a reason to keep doing it because unless you're just into the repetition of life and that's what you do, that's cool. But there's got it's something to it, you know. Right. Cool. Anything else, guys? Nice. We'll try and do these occasionally when we get people in and, and talk about different facets of it and. Uh, Again, Ron and I have similar mindsets on different things. I'd love to find some idea, you know, like next time we get someone in that's really about doing it for MMA or in like comparing notes with them. Because I think that's really illustrative of, again, just how big Jiu Jitsu is. So, um, awesome. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. Great coming over. Always a pleasure to roll with you, man. Don, thanks a lot. Appreciate sharing your thoughts. Uh, all right. That's it for this week. Side Mount to Mount recap. We'll see you next week when we move on to something else.